Well, it's time for another BTS vlog. That's right. Uh, let me get the date, time, and date stamp. It is 23 hours and 37 minutes into the day of Wednesday, January 15th, 2014. That's right. This is the BTS vlog for the uh, 15th and 16th, Jan uh, January 15th and 16th. It is uh, Vlogmas uh, 45 and 40. I mean 46 and 47. It is the ninth and tenth day of Christmas, so Galactic is doing it and also because it's uh, past uh, the January January fourteenth, the uh, last vlog was New Year's. I want to wish everyone uh, Greek ha all the Greeks happy New Year. Twenty uh, pala to anyone named uh, Saint Basil, and we're also twenty pala in general because that's the greeting you say for uh, Happy New Year. Which we're going to actually according to Pilar, is actually quite appropriate because it means uh, many years. Uh, so, anyways, it's been a rather long day, so that's why uh, usually I start these things uh, between eleven and twelve o'clock in the eleven o'clock in the morning or twelve o'clock at noon between that that, that those two uh, hours. But um, uh, had a rather Busy, busy morning. A lot of cleaning. Uh, I ended up also going food shopping. So that took a couple of hours. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, yeah. Uh, when I went food shopping, I found something that I like that I'm going to get. But it has to be delivered, so uh, I've been cleaning in the back warehouse. A lot of times when there's equipment that you want or need, uh, if it's within your budget and you see it on sale, then that's the time to get it. So that's kind of what the way I operate my budgets. I keep my, my budget uh, well enough in check so that if something comes up where uh, a piece of equipment uh, is on sale, it's, I can get it for cheaper than I normally would have gotten, gotten it for, then that's kind of the way I do it. Uh, I'm also still working on the, on the electronics bench behind me. So basically tonight, uh, today, and even tomorrow, uh, it's going to be a lot of cleaning. Today and tomorrow is going to be a lot of cleaning. They did a lot of cleaning in the warehouse. Uh, I'm doing a lot of cleaning up this way here and into the back behind me. It's going to be a lot of cleaning. Uh, and that's kind of how the day went. It's just sort of, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, just kind of... Uh, a long day of cleaning, and it, it, I, I, when you haven't walked for a while, particularly doing doing the uh, walk to do food shopping, and uh, the last time I walked, I think, but but sort of knocked me out these last last month. You saw the, the sleep deprivation um, recoveries, and I'm still partially within the sleep deprivation de deprivation recovery. The issue at hand that kind of uh, sort of put me into the, this sort of the, the, the sleep deprivation, deprivation system uh, the sleep deprived sleep deprived uh, condition where I end up crashing had a lot to do with the walking uh, I had un, un, uh, unknowing not really unknowing but unintentionally done three heavy walks in a row uh, the heavy walks means that uh, when I have my backpack the backpack fills up and it's in excess of 75 pounds. So anything uh, above 75 pounds, so 75 pounds to 90 pounds is for me a very a rather heavy load. And right before the crash, what ended up happening is I ended up doing three uh, heavy loads in a row within two days. Uh, I did a heavy load, rested for, rested for about a day and a half, went out and did another heavy load, rested for two to three days, went out and did another heavy load. So in other words, there were three heavy loads right in a row like that. Normally they're more spaced out. They're maybe once every two months. But this was three heavy loads right in a row. Uh, I was surprised, and this is why I ended up kept, I kept kind of doing it, is because uh, uh, I expected myself to be knocked out after the first heavy load, but I wasn't. So, and I was feeling well enough when I went the second time to do the second one, but I didn't expect the load to be as heavy as it was going to be. So I did that, and then I had to go out 
because uh, I expected myself to be tired, so I said, okay, I'll give myself a week to recover, but it didn't take a week to recover. It just took like two or three days. And then after two or three days, I was feeling well enough to walk. I went out and walked to do the food shopping again, and what ended up happening? I ended up loading up my bag, uh, and again, it was in excess of, uh, of uh, 75 pounds. Walked back. And that was kind of it. That was that was sort of the, that was the end of what I could do, and that's when the collapse hit, came in, and it knocked me out for just about a month. Uh, well, a little bit more than a month. But I started going out. I, I you know I went out uh, uh, end of November, November twenty fifth. I went out, got hit that uh, sort of a heavy wall because of the, that, that that those heavy the three heavy walks. Uh, I hit that wall on the 25th of November, around that period of time, and uh, I really haven't recovered from it uh, until just about a, well, actually this week actually, this this week is my first week back to a, a what I call a full schedule. Uh, what's been happening that has allowed me to sort of catch up on my videos is I introduced a new uh, efficiency system that allows me to uh, use spare time to get other work done and actually get some editing done as well. In other words, uh, I've rearranged things so that times when I'm not really doing anything and it was sort of burn time, uh, I was actually able to get work done. So the efficiency model is working, it's getting better. And because the efficiency model is getting better, it means I can do more with less effort. So, uh, I'm going to leave this short here for now, for this segment, because I am going to come back and do another segment. Uh, not today, but uh, sometime tomorrow, because I am waiting for delivery. The delivery should be here between 8 and 11. So, um, possibly after the delivery comes in, I'll do a, uh, I'll do a uh, video, uh, and we'll talk more about the whole uh, Morgan Page Love's uh, body, because I found some more stuff on it. Apparently, a lot of people are picking up on this stuff. Uh, and there's a lot more going around, and I'll, I'll talk about this more in the next segment. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. Uh, Merry Christmas. Kola Kastuina. Kwani Pala. Hirdo Yutisu to. 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 Vasili and Vasiliki. Bye. Made the mistake again. Pressed the wrong thing and, uh, <laughs> well, you know what happens. Anyways, let me give you the time and date stamp. It is, uh, 14 hours and 45 minutes into the day of Thursday, uh, January 16th, 2014. Once again, it's 14 hours, 44 minutes into the day of, uh, Thursday, January 16th, 2014. Sometimes I have a tendency to ramble over my words. Excuse me. And uh, today is no exception. <laughs> but uh, part, part of the reasons you do I do these logs is sort of uh, to sort of get in the practice of, of of when you're speaking, trying to um, come up with the right words. But uh, apparently, from watching documentaries on uh, uh, other channels like uh, booktv.org uh, that's from C-SPAN and where people are speaking at the Smithsonian Institute and other institutions like that I'm not the only one who as they're trying to speak tries to uh, not only a fumble for words but, but trying to as you're speaking trying to think of the right word and, wh and how to phrase what you want to say properly because it's not always, you know, when you're writing something, yeah, you can do it because you can take a while. But when you're speaking, uh, you have to come up with the words right away. You have to think of these things right away. And you don't want to sound like you're reading. You don't want to be reading something off a piece, a piece of paper. You don't want, want it to be that uh, dull. So, not only really dull, but you don't want it read. In other words, you, you want the... You want a more natural response. You want a more natural flow to the uh, to the uh, whatever you're saying to the, the thoughts to the ideas 
And this being said, uh, this brings us back to uh, Morgan Page Love's uh, body image. As I said, I talked more about this because uh, I went by a um, new uh, website. And this is what's, what's cool about these uh, uh, doing my YouTube stroll. You get to meet new and interesting people. And as I said before, just because someone says something, maybe you disagree with them, doesn't necessarily mean that the person has nothing to say. It just you just disagree with some of the, some, either some of the points or or some of the the present present some of the points, some of the presentation of the points. Uh, and this one girl was Savannah Brown. Uh, she did a slam poetry. What look? Uh, what guys look for in a girl? It was based off a previous uh, post by somebody else. Uh, some guy posted on you know, what guys look for in a girl. Uh, I don't know. Uh, my 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 uh, my view of uh, slam poetry is. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I, I found, I find some of that stuff. I uh, you know. Here's how to phrase it. When I was younger, it was interesting. It was oh yeah, somebody saying something. They're speaking up and so on and so forth. But as I got older and and, and more particularly as I got more experience in with research and really started figuring out what was going on, and realizing how much. Uh, not only young people, but the uh, the world is lied to by the leaders, uh, so-called leaders. Then the whole slam poetry thing seemed to be uh, kind of pretentious and whiny because I know a lot of the establishment folks uh, are now part of this whole slam poetry. They're part of this whole quote quote unquote uh, counterculture. I mean. It, it, it's a bizarre thing. When counterculture becomes the establishment, who then becomes counterculture? And this is kind of where the, where the question is. Is that, And the thing is, is that, uh, you know, she's a young person. She, she's uh, 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 into the slam poetry, into that sort of counterculture type of uh, environment. But that culture, counter, counter, the counterculture environment isn't new. It's an old environment. Uh, it comes comes out. The, you, you can see go all the way back to the beatniks of uh, the fifties and earlier. Uh, and the thing is, is you, if you go back and look at the history of these counterculture people, pe counterculture. Oh, uh, there's a tongue twister. <laughs> the counterculture people. If you go back and take a look at their history, you'll find that they actually don't do much of anything. Yeah, they get up, they do their poetry, their poetry is primarily about whining about this and that, and by the end of the day, nothing much actually happens. I mean, yeah, people are going to say things to you about your body, I mean, things, you know, and I think it's, 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 this is sort of one of the things you hear from girls a lot of time is, uh, and they're doing the slam poetry about beauty, that you everybody's beautiful. Well, the thing is, is that uh, when they talk about their, you know, their, their imperfections and, this, and so on and so forth, uh, they're not looking at it from a perspective, and, and this is sort of where, where this comes into it. Uh, this girl, Savannah Brown, is actually quite popular. Her, her channels get a lot of views. I, I mean, I've seen, I've seen people who don't necessarily fit the cultural mold of beauty, and, and particularly don't uh, fit the uh, cultural mode of beauty, and rather than having ten thousand views or a thousand views, uh, they're lucky if they get five views on their videos. So when you're up there doing slam poetry about uh, what guys look for in a girl and about being uh, sort of put upon because you don't you are you don't think that you meet the be the standard of beauty, go take a look at, uh, at other YouTubers' videos. Uh, and channels who don't fit the mold but only get five views or less and then sort of uh, <laughs> you know if you will count your chickens to see uh, uh, you know you know you know, a lot of times what people think of you in many cases can, can be from the other person's perspective the other other people cannot may not like you or 
like your personality. May you may like look good, but you, they may not like your personality. They may not like what you like or like what you think or how you phrase things. Or there's a whole bunch of different things. But there's a difference between someone not liking your personality and someone not liking you because of your physical appearance. And I find sometimes that girls who do have better looks than others often complain that they aren't or they don't feel themselves to be as beautiful as they should be or, or as others. In other words, they their, it's their perspective that causes the problem, not necessarily others' views of them. So, anyways, I'm going to talk more about this probably in the next segment and because um, our time is up. So, I'll see you in the next segment. It's time for the third segment of the BTS vlog for January 15th and 16th. Let's get started with the time and date stamp. Because, without, because it is a vlog and if it's a vlog then you need a time and date stamp because without a time and date stamp it's not a vlog. <laughs> right guys? Oh, well, you know. You've seen Star Trek. You know, you can't have a log without a star date. So this is it. It's uh, 22 hours and 8 minutes. Into the day of uh, Thursday, January 16th, uh, 2014. Uh, things have changed up again. The, my schedule's kind of changed up again, so we are going to get more content out. Uh, what I thought was going to happen for Fota, uh, the end of uh, uh, Christmas, the last uh, days of Christmas, uh, is not what I expected. It's just, it's just going to be something on Sunday, so I'm going to be out Saturday and Sunday. Well, Saturday night and Sunday more during the day. So that means um, uh, I can upload uh, and work on uh, on uh, episodes, do video production until uh, Saturday morning, right? Uh, Saturday morning, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. So that's uh, what we're going to do. Um, right now, we're going to talk about uh, about uh, Savannah Brown. And what a, what uh, guys look for in girls her uh, slam poetry. Uh, I always just said, I, you, 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 no matter what your opinion is of what the person says, you always have to take a look at the person who's saying what they're saying, and take that into consideration when you when when, when you um, sort of make your decision as to how you feel about what the person has said. And it's not that I disagree with her. Is it, what I find that, um, uh, and then I've said to this, said this uh, earlier to uh, um, uh, on Christmas to one of my other friends, who's a rather young person, and she's getting into alternative music, um, called alt indie uh, rock, because she's getting tired of the mainstream. And what happens is when you first go off the uh, mainstream, you first get into your uh, uh, alternative environment it's kind of exciting because you're you know you're not no longer mainstream you're not part of the average anymore and you're uh, uh, going out there on the edge and sort of being different from everybody else and that's kind of cool so but anyways uh, she uh, when I go by and do my uh, do my YouTube stroll uh, if you've been watching the videos and there's not a lot of people watching my videos there's like like five or six people watching my videos uh, uh, you'll know that uh, my YouTube account is connected to Twitter and Facebook. So every time I do something on uh, the like it video or um, add it to a playlist, it's tweeted out, it's sent out to my Facebook feed, and you get to see what I'm doing. So that's how the YouTube show came about, is that uh, you get to sort of see my stroll around YouTube. And... I did that. I went by the I went by her video. Uh, what a guy looked for in a girl that slammed poetry. I liked it and I put it into uh, my YouTube stroll page. I didn't know. I didn't put it in the YouTube stroll uh, list. I put it into the Insta vlog list because I plan to do more on it. Uh, and she uh, favored it, so I got to see her favorite uh, that tweet. So I went by to see what she has to say on uh, Twitter. What her Twitter account looks like. And found out she's quite an interesting person. And ironically, she wants to be an explorer. In other words, she wants to be where I am uh, uh, in, in her future. But uh, So I'm going to kind of let her know that, uh, yeah, well, where she wants to be an explorer, I am an explorer. I am living uh, what she wants to be. And it is possible to do that. 
Uh, it just may not always be what you expect it's going to be. And I, I, I've sort of got to the opinion uh, through experience that uh, things often aren't what you expect them to be, but that, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, what you end up getting, even though it doesn't meet your expectations, uh, is necessarily bad. But sometimes it can't, can, it doesn't necessarily is as good as you expect it to be, but, uh, you know, it has its good points and it has its bad points. It just matter. It's a matter of perspective and how you take things. You take things in in a positive manner, or you take things in a uh, a, a drastic, uh, cata uh, catastrophic manner. If you look at things negatively and everything is catastrophic, then unfortunately life is going to be catastrophic for you because uh, you know. It's not going to be what you expect. Exploration is exciting, it's fun, but it also can be lonely. It can be because you're one of the few people doing this. There's not a lot of people out there doing exploration. Uh, and there are a lot of people who will tell you they're explorers, but uh, again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I'm familiar with this, the easiest way to say it, there's a lot of bullshit out there. Uh, and this is kind of uh, what, you kind, you, what you kind of find out. Uh, and I was saying, talking about the, you know, and it's uh, talking about her age because she's 17. Uh, that it's not, and not, and this is what I want to get across. It's not an uh, an old versus young type of thing. And it's not it, it, because what happens is many people say, "Well, a person older they've had they've had like more life experience, and uh, yeah, they understand more." Well, yeah, life experience does work to a certain degree, but it's experience in total. It's the actual experience that you've had that lets you know whether or not you've uh, uh, understand something or don't understand something, and how you understand it. I mean, if 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 you have a lot of life experience and you, and you never really question what goes on in your life or question the things you've told, you've been told, or even question your own ideas, your own thoughts and ideas, and how you understand things, then then you, the experience is is only limited by your own understanding itself. And so what happens? There are a lot of adults out there who live with it within illusions of what life is actually like, or what society actually is. And so what happens, this contributes to a lot of the disillusionment that a lot of uh, uh, people feel when they are kind of neglected from society or, or they're shoved to a particular side of society where they feel sort of left out. Uh, just because you move into an alternative environment doesn't necessarily mean that environment is, is, is inviting. Because as I said, all groups, if there is a group that you're moving into, want some degree of, of uh, confirmation. You have to conform to a certain degree. The only time you don't conform, or can't, if you can't conform, like I, in my case, I can't conform, then you were asked at some point in time to leave that group. Uh, and you can be asked verbally, and you can be a sort of, well, not verbal, but sort of uh, intimated or, or implied, because they're not simply talking to you. You know, <laughs> the, the communication breaks down. You they're not you're not asked to parties. You're not asked to different social events, and you kind of ignore it. When that happens, you kind of take the hint. Well, maybe our relationship is over, and it's time to move on to another group. If that's the thing is, you want to move on to another group. Anyways, we're coming to the end of the segment. This is it. This is the problem with segment production. We're coming to an end of, end of the segment. We are going to continue this thought in the next segment, the last segment for the day. See you in a few minutes. <laughs> There we go. We're back again. We were talking about illusions in society and how people uh, who are disillusioned with society, uh, when they find an alternative route or route or however you want to say it, uh, need to be careful because that alternative route it may not turn out to be the way you expect it. And this is unfortunate with the young, particularly younger girls. Younger guys can have this problem too, but uh, it's particularly with girls. There are a lot of, let's put it this way, assholes in this world who will take advantage of your particular situation. They will tell you what you want to hear. They will help you feel good. But there are their motives for helping you feel good. And this is the, talking about the illusion between old and young and and so on and so forth. Their motives to help you feel good may not be what, or I should say, may not be 
as altruistic as you think it's going to be. In other words, their motives may be uh, something other than uh, <laughs> helping you feel good. I mean, in other words, uh, if particularly if you're, you, and she's she's young, and from my, from my perspective, she uh, I'm a geek. I'm uh, sort of I've had girls actively move away. She's a cute girl. Let's put it this way: she's a cute girl, and there are a lot of alternative guys out there with long hair like this, you know, who will know how to, just like any other football player, jock, uh, uh, player, just the way they go up and play other girls, no more popular girls, there are guys just like that in the alternative community who will do the exact same thing. They know exactly what to say to these girls, they know exactly how to flatter these girls, and just as this, and then this is what they'll do is they'll come up and this girl is doing the slam poetry against, you know, what guys are looking for. And they'll tell the girl everything she wants to hear about how guys should view girls. But this is not what they're really feeling. This is not what they're really about. What they're really about is if you're pretty, if you're young, they want you. This is their goal. This is their score. And this is their, uh, modus operandi. This is how they operate. This is their game. In other words, the alternative environment, the hippie environment, the the uh, misfit of society environment is where they hunt. And don't, you know, you gotta understand this. These people are predators. They are there to hunt. They are there to score. And that is their primary function. That is their primary driver. This is their primary motive. And everything else on that you see with it is facade. It's lies. And it's designed specifically uh, to get you to do things that you would not ordinarily do. Uh, again, this is specifically and uh, not, well, specifically, but, but particularly aimed at girls. There are guys who will do it to other guys. Um, but there are very few girls who will do it to two guys, but it's, but hunters are primarily guys. Let's put it this way. I'm not saying that all guys are hunters or all they're all predators, but primarily, you know what? This is where you have to be careful. This is you know if they're coming up to you and talking to you, you know they want to sit down and have a private chat with you, or you know they want to spend more time with you, <laughs> and they're discussion often turns from uh, things of you know deep interest and uh, deep uh, thoughts to you know other different deep thoughts and feelings and <laughs> in other words the hands start roaming other, other places they shouldn't be uh, then you kind of got to uh, get the understanding that these people uh, are not what they pretend to be that they are pretending to be particular something but this this, this is this is uh, moving on into, uh, into into the alternative. And this is sort of... Uh, I think this topic is kind of apropos because it is coming up on uh, February. February is the annu anniversary for the mockumentary uh, Girls on YouTube. And I will be doing a docu a real documentary, not a mockumentary, on Girls on YouTube in February. February I will be putting it together in the instance of the logs. It will be a BTRL special. Uh, yeah, BB, uh, BBTRL special. Uh, the BBTRL special will be a, uh, a Insta Vlog special. It's going to be on Girls on YouTube. It's going to be a real documentary. It's not going to be a mockumentary. A mockumentary, um, and this is what I've decided to call it, a mockumentary is a, is a documentary or let's say a video or, or something like that that poses as a documentary. It's... it's Intended to be a doctor, but the people who are doing this, in many ways, they're comedians. But what happens is their arguments have no particular meat or substance to it. In other words, all they're doing is making fun. They're bringing out comedy, but their their supposed satire doesn't exist. In other words, if you go and explore what their satire is supposed to be. You find that it doesn't exist. In other words, they are as misinformed about the topic that they are supposedly, you know, playing the satire at, uh, as a person who uh, 
claims to know but doesn't know themselves. And, and, t and then does a serious documentary, but at the same time, they're also in the room. But I think so what happens, when you have satire without any real information behind it, that's not satire, that's mocking. And so, in this case here, I call the girls on YouTube video, that uh, uh, video that we're supposed to be documenting, I call that a mockumentary. It looks like a documentary, it was filmed like a do documentary, it was presented as a documentary, but it had no particular substance to it. There was no fundamental reality behind it. So what I'm going to do on the anniversary of the, uh, the girls on YouTube, because we do have this topic coming up again, uh... I'm going to take a, look, a serious look at Girls on YouTube. It's not actually about Girls on YouTube. It's about uh, popularity on YouTube. That we have a high... What's happening on YouTube is the high school environment all over. You have the popular people, and then you have the not-so-popular people. You have YouTube and Google playing to the popular people towards the popularity and ignoring the unpopular. And my argument is the um, unpopular in many cases, are have bring more information, they bring more to YouTube than do the popular people do. So, this is what's coming up on in February. And I said, Savannah, if you have any questions about being an explorer, about being on the edge, uh, don't hesitate to ask. I've been on the edge of, my, on, on the edge of society all my life. I don't fit into any group. So, if you want to talk, if you want to say hello, here I am. All right, take it easy. I want to say, Clark Estuina, Juanio Pala, Happy New Year. Here to Yutisu for Vasili Vasiliki, and that's it. Bye bye. Democratic Earth. Earth.